Hey guys, welcome to London Players Guild. Today we have a uh, part two of Set Seven Spoilers: Red Green Brawly Saga cards. So first things first, I'm sorry about the last video's audio. That was a bit of a mistake on my end. I was sitting too close to the mic. But yes, today we're going to go through the Brawly Saga cards, which we should just dive right into. So first we have the leaders, as last time. We start with Son Gohan leader. Activate main once per turn, you can burst two cards, and if your opponent has five or more life, deal one damage to your you take one life, sorry, and then if your opponent has five or more life, you deal one damage to them. So the good thing is that there is that requirement that your opponent needs to have five or more life. Otherwise you would never want to awaken because you would just keep on dealing damage with Gohan. It is still a very aggressive leader that can deal damage to your opponent very quickly. It can deal damage on even turn 1, so I think the leader is going to be really strong. As far as the aggressive leader goes, he does not untap energy, which is good. Uh, drawing more cards doesn't really do a lot for Son Gohan, so if he had untap energy, he this would be a really aggressive deck, and I don't think that would be helping. When he awakens, he has a sparking 5, when it attacks, draw one card. Once per turn, when one of your battle cards activates Alliance, you can choose one of your opponent's battle cards with 30,000 power or less and KO it. And activate main once per turn. If you have five cards in your drop area, you can choose three cards from your hand, place them in your drop area, and choose all of your red and green battle cards. And both of the uh, both of the chosen. Oh, sorry, both the chosen cards and the leader gets 10,000 power for the duration of the turn. So you can uh, discard three cards, which can be, for example, extra cards that you won't be able to use, or some expensive combo cards, and give 10,000 combo power to every single of your cards, really. I like the synergy with Alliance. The second effect is pretty much go all in. If you can't win, then it's sad, because you just lost three cards, and your opponent is probably going to try to get rid of all of your cards on board or finish you off. Um, it is going to be a strong leader. It's definitely going to be a strong leader. I'm not sure how it's going to play. I think it's going to be very aggressive and when your opponent is as it's when your opponent is at one life and you have like three or four battle cards, you're just going to use the last effect of the leader. Next we have Broly leader. So unawakened a Broly leader has a printed critical, which is huge. And when this card is placed in your leader area, choose up to one Dormant Legend from your deck, activate it. So at the beginning of the game, you start with Dormant Legend in the game, really. Before you draw your opening hand, before you get your life, before you put the mulligan. When your life is four or less, you may draw one card and untap one of your energy, so that's the meat in the middle awaken. The fact that you can start with Dormant Legend that we're going to go through a bit later is actually really good because it stops your opponent's aggressiveness unless they have a removal for that dormant legend. I think if Brawl is going to be big, the removal for field spells might actually see a lot of play. And then we have Awakened Form is Brawly Recurring Nightmare. So every time he attacks you draw one card and activate battle once per turn. You can choose one card in your hand, place it in your drop area, and choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with 10,000 power or less and KO it. So, this is a good effect, because you can use it during your turn and during your opponent's turn, with some cards that reduce power. Um, for example, the Max Speed Son Goku from the Saiyan Saga, and some other Broly cards. Uh, this card can actually get rid of quite a lot of stuff. I think it's not going to be that great on the effect. The front side is really good with the critical. I don't think a walk inside is that great. But still, it's a Broly leader. It's another color for the Broly leader because we had green Broly, uh, black Broly, and yellow Broly. Although yellow Broly was only BR, but still. It's another color for the Broly. Next, we go into Familial Bonds. Uh, the theme of the Broly Saga that they're showing here is Gohan, Goten and Trunks fighting against Broly. 
Goku really doesn't pay, uh, play a big role in this fight. So, first we start with Helping Hand Son Gohan. It's a free drop, 15,000. Uh, it's a counter attack. You negate the attack and play this card uh, from your hand. During your opponent's turn, if you have Son Goten and Trunks Youth in play in your battle area, you reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by 2. So it's a 1 drop, 15k negate. If you control the right two cards on board, which might prove some somewhat difficult. Next one is Son Gohan, Hope of the People. Uh, you can have only one of those uh, in play in your battle area. And if you have at least one Son Gohan, Trunks Youth and Fidel uh, in your drop area, you can reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two. So it's another one drop Son Gohan that has 15,000 power, which is, again, on theme, very aggressive. Next one is the first super rare, the Pandable Brothers Son Gohan. Uh, it has an X evolve for one red and one of any color. And you evolve a Son Gohan adolescence with cost of three. So those two Son Gohans that we just shown only reduce the cost in hand, so on board they're still considered free drops, so you can evolve into this. This Son Gohan has double strike, and when a card evolves into this card, you draw two cards, and you have no other battle cards besides this one in play. Uh, choose up to one green Son Goten and a green Trunks with an edge cost of 4 from your drop area and play them. So this card is created to replay some of your other cards, but it can also be used with the next super rare that we're going to show, which is Son Gohan and Son Goten Familial Bonds. So this card is considered Son Goten, and it's considered green. So if it's in your drop area, you can use the Son Gohan, the dependable brother Son Gohan, to bring this back. It has Alliance Red and Green, and it gets the power of the card switch to rest mode and triple strike for the duration of the battle. Also, when you play this card, uh, you can activate the skill. For the duration of the turn, when your opponent uses a skill to play a battle card, your opponent chooses two cards from their hand and places them in their drop area. So that works with keyword skills as well as non-keyword skills. So arrival, uh, counterplay, counterattack, every single skill that requires you to play the cards. Uh, you need to uh, choose two cards from your life and place them in a drop area, so you need to crit yourself for two. Uh, damage, uh, which is interesting enough, but if you have a counterplay in response to this being played, then you won't be able uh, a counterplay that plays a battle card. You won't take any life for that. It's still a very strong combo because if you combo out on the first attack correctly, you can play Son Gohan Hope of the oh the Green Son Gohan. Then turn to you can play Dependable Brother. Son Gohan and resurrect Son Gohan and Son Goten from your drop area. So, yeah. I think this is a decent combo. I don't think it's going to be overly powerful, but it's a strong card. And lastly, we have Son Goku Heavenly Salvation. So, when you play Son Gohan and Son Goten Familial Bonds, so the multicolored Gohan and Goten, uh, if you don't have Heavenly Salvation in play, you can play him from your hand. And once per turn when this card is switched to Resmond by Alliance, if you only have Goku, Gohan Adolescence, Goten, and or Trunks Youth cards in play in your battle area, choose this card and up to one of your opponent's battle cards and switch... Uh, sorry, uh, up to one of your uh, other battle cards and switch them to active mode. In other words, you can attack with some Gohan and some Goten, rest uh, some Goku Heavenly Salvation, 34,000 triple strike, and then use Son Goku's Heavenly Salvation to untap both himself and Son Gohan and Son Goten. Uh, then you can combo him off and play another, possibly. Uh, there is... you can have multiple of those on board, but you can't use the effect to play the second one if you already have one on board. And the effect that restands is once per turn, so it is fairly balanced. Uh, it's a niche combo. I don't think that's going to be very playable. I think the Pendable Brother Son Gohan is decent because it's double strike and draws cards. You might play 
the Son Gohan and Son Goten for energy fix, although I don't think you really need to. You can play it as a resurrection target as well, of course. Well, now we go through Goten and Trunks, because they have a, the whole little archetype in this set. So first important card is Exalted Trio Fidel. It's a one drop, 4000 power, and when you play her, you look at the top three cards from your deck and choose one red or green, Gohan Adolescent, Goten, or Trunks Youth. So she essentially searches for the essential pieces. Uh, lots of essentials here. And then you place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck. So she can search, for example, for one of the other Exalted Trio. We have Exalted Trio Song Goten. So you can have only one Exalted Trio Song Goten uh, in your battle area. And if you have Videl in your battle area, you, redu you reduce the cost of this card by one. So it's a one drop 10k card. When this card attacks, if you have Trunks Youth in your battle area, he becomes a 15k double strike for the duration of the turn. Now Trunks works the same, but he gets critical. They have been doing this every now and then. I think in the World Martial Tournament they did the same thing. That if you had one Goten, then Trunks became critical. And if you had Trunks, Goten became double strike. It's an interesting interaction between, between those two. I regret a bit that we don't have any Gotenks in this set, but I think those might be a decent cards to play if someone wants to play Gotenks the Decade deck. Next one is some Goten Out Adventuring. So both Goten and Trunks can become a Super Saiyan. In this case, their Super Saiyan forms are green, but they don't require green to be played. They have X Evolve without any cost. But you need to play them on the red version of themselves with cost of 2. So in this one, you need to put him on top of red Son Goten with energy cost of 2. When a card evolves into this card and your leader card is Son Gohan Adolescence, you get to draw one card, switch this card to active, then you KO up to one of your opponent's cards with cost 4 or less. So you can attack with Son Goten, then evolve into this card, restand and attack again. In the meantime, drawing a card and getting rid of one of your opponent's cards. I think this card. I think this combo is really fun. I don't think it's very good, but it's very fun, definitely. And Trunks out adventuring uh, evolves the same way as Son Goten, so you evolve on top of a red Trunks youth with cost of two. It has Blocker and Revenge, which is interesting combination. It has only ten thousand power, not fifteen, so it's easier to kill. And yeah, they brought back Blocker and Revenge in this set, which is interesting. And the same as Trunk, as Goten, sorry. When a card evolves into this card and your leader card is Son Gohan Adolescence, you draw one card, then switch this card to active mode. Uh, so you can attack with both Trunks and Goten and then start evolving, drawing more cards, possibly playing more cards if you still have energy. Uh, the fact that you don't need to charge green is actually really good. I really like that. So you can play essentially mono red with some additional, maybe, arrival stuff, because you can combo out Trunks and Goten to resurrect with um, the red Gohan. And now we have a very small archetype. I, I'm not really sure it's an archetype, because the cards are not really that well intertwined, but they all reference the village. So, uh, Coco, the village princess. It's essentially fledgling pun. So once per turn you can choose one card from your hand and put it in a drop area, you draw one card. It's a cycling tool. It's nice that red has some cycling, but red is not slow enough color for it to matter, I think. It might seem play in red, blue, or red, yellow, Kitku, if that's still a thing. Uh, Coco's Grandpa Village Oldster. When you play this card, choose you search essentially for one uh, Coco in your deck added to your hand and shuffle. The problem with this card is it costs 2 to search for a 1 drop, so if you don't have Coco on turn 1, I don't think she's that great. And then on turn 2 you need to spend your 2 energy to play Coco's Grandpa, so play something that can't even attack properly to search for Coco. In sealed, they're going to be really good, because they give you uh, not card advantage, but cycling and combo power. Elder Vi uh, Village Guardian is 
the same as Tian Shin Han from the previous set. So when you combo with this card and your leader card is red, you may choose one card from your hand, place it in a drop area. If you do, you either shuffle three of your battle cards with cost three or more and power 35,000 or less in your drop area, uh, or you don't shuffle them back, you put them at the bottom of your deck. Or you choose one battle card in your opponent's drop area and return it to your opponent's deck. And then your opponent shuffles. Uh, so this card is got this type of a card is going to exist for every color. It's a kinda good anti-mill, but because it can't recur itself, I don't think it's going to see that much play. It can recur some really good stuff. It can put back your combo pieces back into your deck if you need to. Uh, if you are being mailed. If you have pieces that need to be specifically in the deck. Next one is Shaman, Ritual Master. So he costs 2, he has 5000 power again. Not very strong cards. But when you play him you draw one card. And when a card in your opponent's life is placed in the drop area, you may place uh, this card in its owner's drop area. If you do, choose up to one red Natada Village monster with cost 2 from your deck and play it. Shuffle your deck. So, this requires to crit your opponent's life. The card does nothing until you crit your opponent's life. Uh, village doesn't have much of a crit. It would work with the Broly leader because Broly leader has a built-in crit. But beside that, and the uh, Natada village monster is just a vanilla. 2 cost 20,000 power. So you change the Shaman Ritual Master uh, for the Natada village monster, provided that that monster is still in your deck. That's the biggest problem with this. You crit your opponent, you sacrifice your Shaman, or you send it to the drop area, and then you look at your deck and you see that your one or two of Natada village monsters are in your life. And then it's sad. Also, I don't understand why the village monster is an earthling, but I will leave it at that. Now we go to legendary Super Saiyan. So Broly is coming back. It's the OG Broly, not the new Broly from the movies. So it's not Broly PR, it's the OG Broly. So let's start with the card referenced by the leader, which is Dormant Legend. Dormant Legend is a two-cost red extra card. It's a field card. You can't place cards under this card with except with this card skill, so you can't use other skills to put cards underneath it. I don't really know why it's there, but it's fine. When a card in your life is added to your hand or placed in your drop area, drink your opponent's turn. Place the top card of your deck under this card. <clears throat> so, I don't think you would play anything besides the one copy that you start with, because you can't put more cards underneath it after, oh, sorry, second effect, activate main. If there are three or more cards under this card, you can put this card in your drop area and play red Broly with cost of fall from your deck. So, I don't think you would play more than one copy that's searched by the leader. Because you need to take three damage to activate the skill. And then if they hit you for the fourth damage, and you haven't played the second Dormant Legend, you can't. You can't use really the second Dormant Legend because you would need to go down to one life during your opponent's turn. And they're just going to be careful about not doing that. And there's another card that interacts with Dormant Legend a bit differently, but mostly the deck cares about Dormant Legend being in the drop area and you only really need one. The deck can't play Overrealm, which is a bit sad because you need to make sure that the Dormant Legend stays in your drop area. And the reason for that is... Oh, we're going to go to that in a moment. So, the main card you would probably want to pull is Broly Counter Reversal. So during your turn, this card has plus 5000 power and can attack battle cards in active mode, which is a brilliant skill. It's a removal skill that can get around barrier. Once per turn, when your opponent activates Counter Skill, you deal 1 damage to them. Which, again, is a brilliant skill. If your opponent wants to counter, you just deal 1 damage to them essentially gives all the counters, oh, the first counter in the turn, that additional cost of taking the damage. It might seem good for the player playing the counter because they get card back into hand, but it starts racking up and you can have multiple of those Brolies on board as well. 
So suddenly every single counter becomes more and more problematic. Uh, we have Super Saiyan, Broly, Legend Unleashed. So this card re references Dormant Legend if you have... If you can't activate Dormant Legend with its own effect, uh, this card has Activate Main. If your opponent has three or more energy, you may choose one Dormant Legend in your battle area and put it in the drop area and play this card from hand. Also, when you play this card, for the duration of the turn, if your leader card is a red Broly card, you can activate its Awakened skill even if you have five or more life, which I don't think I would ever do. I think Broly is way better unawoken than awoken, but that might be just me. I think the critical printed on the leader is really good. Next, we go into multicolored cards, and I think personally this this design for the multicolored card. There's one more for the yellow and blue which is going to be coming, I think, tomorrow we're going to do that. This one is Broly Demonic Origins. So it's a two-drop, uh, one red, one green. Uh, it has energy exhaust, and it also has a permanent effect. If there is a card that is both red and green in your energy other than this card, you negate this card's energy exhaust skill in all areas. Which means if turn one you charge a multicolored card, turn two you can charge this and it comes in untapped, which means you can immediately use it, which means your energy fixing is way better than you would expect. Also, when you play this card, your your opponent chooses one card in their hand and places it in a drop area. I don't think that effect is ever going to be used. I don't think that card is ever going to be played anywhere outside being comboed as a multicolored card or put in energy. Uh, next, we have another target for Dormant Legend, because this Broly costs 4 and Technically, it's red, so you can play it. It has a rival red green, and it costs one red to play. Uh, you can have only one of him in play, and you can't play him from anywhere unless you have Dormant Legend in drop area. That's why you need to keep Dormant Legend in your drop area. When you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and give it minus 10,000 power until the end of your opponent's turn. Uh, because it has a rival, you can play it during your opponent's turn as well. So you can enable your leader's ability, your awoken leader's ability to KO something. And when your opponent combos, you may choose one card in your hand, place it in your drop area. If you do, choose one card in your opponent's combo area and place it in, a, in the owner's drop area to negate the skill for the duration of the turn. That's a mouthful. Essentially, when your opponent combos, doesn't matter if it's your turn or your opponent's turn, you can choose, you can discard one card and get rid of one of their combo pieces. It doesn't need to be the one that they just comboed with, but you can get rid of any of them. Side note, if you get rid of Champa, the double strike was already granted, so that doesn't change anything. And the last card in the Broly chain is Broly Tragedy Foretold. So this is a six drop Broly with a rival red green again and cost red and green. It has the same tag as uh, rapid Barrage, I think Barrage it was. So you can only have one of them on board, and you need to have Dormant Legend to play him. When you play this card, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring Barrier, and they get minus 15,000 power until the end of your opponent's turn. So again, it's a rival. You can play it during your opponent's turn. The fact that it can ignore Barrier and reduce something is really nice. I don't think it's going to be that important on the amount it reduces, but I might be wrong. Also, when your opponent combos, you may choose card. It's the same effect as the Fall Drop Broly, but you don't need to discard. And you can also use the effect is the skill is negated for the rest of the turn. I think those two Broly's are going to be interesting to play against because you can't really combo, or you need to count one more combo card that you would think. Um, they're really strong on their arrival as well. I think they might see some play. I want to see. Freeza Prison abusing this because Freeza Prison can use Dormant Legend. Um, and yeah, and can use the Broly Battle Gods as well. I think that might be interesting in the Freeza Prison. And we have two extra cards. There's no utility cards per se that don't fit anywhere else. So, first one is the red counterplay. Every color in this set so far is getting a two drop counterplay. If your leader card is red, if the battle card your opponent 
is playing has 20,000 power or less, it's not played, it goes into a drop area. It's essentially preemptive strike, but doesn't check the cost, but checks the 20,000 power or less. And then we have the red negate that can be used from the drop area. If your leader card is red, negate the attack, then choose up to one of your battle cards, and it gains plus 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. You can only activate this card once per turn, or card with this name once per turn. Also, if this card is in your drop area, you can activate it by paying its cost and removing this card and one red card from your hand from the game. Again, remove from the game and war are two different things, so you should not be comparing them at all. And it's two different piles that you will need to have next to your discard if you ever use this. I think red one is the best one. It's the best negate because it gets it gives that 5,000 power to a battle card, which you can use with any battle card. It doesn't need to be red battle card. So multicolored decks with red leaders might actually use this card. And again, those negates help to survive against the blue Gogeta combo with Shenron. The Nile, the Nile of Hope I don't think is going to see an awful lot of play. Uh, it's an interesting counterplay, but red is usually not a control. Uh, Prison is going to be really happy to play this card, actually. Well, the Prison rather plays the Live to Fight another day, which increases the cost of playing cards. I don't know. The set looks interesting, the theme looks interesting, but I think that the Science set has a bit better cards than the Broly set. Uh, yes, that's it for uh, this part. Make sure to come in tomorrow when we start going through the yellow and blue cards. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please check out our other videos. Also remember to like and subscribe, that really helps the channel. And if you want to help the channel even more, there's our Patreon in the description. Take care guys, and thank you for watching.